And thanks to all of you for, for joining us. I, I remember just seeing Kathy from Wells Fargo reminds me of the first summit we ever hosted. Um, we were really proud that there were 20 people who came. It was in our office, and you know, it was great. It was great, and, and yesterday's small group conversations, that, that depth of dialogue really reminded me of that first summit we had. And then of course now, just um, seeing all of you, thank you so much for, for being here. Some of you I know traveled very long distances to be here. Thank you for believing in us, starting from way back when, and thank you for continually pushing us to innovate, both on the social side, as well as now more broadly. Um, we're just so honored to be here. Uh, my opening remarks are uh, really in paying homage to um, a special time that it is in, in, over the next couple of months. And, and it's the, the topic is really, how do we market and connect to our customers like it's 2017? Because it is 2017. That's my topic. So go back with me, if you will, um, just a few blocks from here, 10 years ago. 10 years ago, June 29th, 2007. Just a few blocks from here, right? Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, he unveiled the iPhone almost exactly 10 years ago. It's almost hard to, to remember. It's hard to think back to a time pre-smartphone, right? But that's, so it's only been 10 years. And in the last decade, all of us, all of our employees, all of our agents, our advisors, our customers, we have witnessed the ultimate renaissance. Really not just in marketing, in everything, in how we interact, in how we build relationships, in how we meet people, in, in how we apply for jobs, in how we do our tasks in our personal and professional lives. And if we thought that computers were a big deal, I mean, boy, does the numbers show it all. Tablets, smartphones, over two and a half billion iPhones and Android devices now. Just unbelievable. And how we spend our time, how we connect with people, how we get anything done, completely different. And it's, it's easy to take for granted, right? Because we're so immersed in it every day. The intimacy of photo and video, of being able to connect with someone, whether it's a loved one or one of your clients or one of your prospects, anytime, anywhere. The on-demand nature and the location-aware nature of so many of the apps that we've come to take for granted. Our customers, all of us, when we want something, we want it right away. We don't want to wait. We don't, have to, we don't want to fill out a form. We don't want to have to go in to meet someone face-to-face. -face. We want it instantly. And unsurprisingly, over 90% of adults, and I'm guessing probably 100% of the people here, have their smartphone within arm's reach 100% of the time. And so it's really become an extension of each of us, of each of our agents and advisors, of each of our customers. And that is revolutionary. Now, not only has this changed how we interact in our personal lives, all of us and, and, our, and our customers want to use our mobile devices to connect with businesses. Why? Because it's convenient. That's why, right? So people want to text with, their, with businesses. They want, they want to connect with their doctors and agents and hair salons and hotels because it's easy for them, right? They don't want to have to take out their computer or call and, and, and be put on hold. Now, this renaissance over the last 10 years has given rise to a tremendous wave of startups. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of startups, many of which are located within about a two or three mile radius of, of where we are. We're in the south of Market, Soma neighborhood of San Francisco, which of course is the birthplace of Twitter, Instagram, Hearsay, Lyft, Uber, countless companies, all within walking distance of where we're sitting or standing now. Um, including in the financial services industry. So financial services startups that are specifically built mobile first, mobile only. You see Robinhood, you see Sigfig here. So there's been tremendous innovation as a result of the mobile platform in the last decade. Even many of your firms have invested in mobile. Many of your firms have, have made great strides in terms of mobile apps and and robo-advice and a lot of these um, areas where startups are investing. So while all of this is true, at the same time, many of our advisors and agents 
um, because of regulation, because of all of the hurdles, because of, of legacy infrastructure, many of them continue to market in 2017 like it's 2007, maybe even earlier, right? We know our agents and their staff, they're still calling, whether it's for prospecting or to chase someone who hasn't paid their bill yet, and we know they don't get through on the first try or the second try or the third try. I mean, who picks up their phone? What are the chances that when someone happens to be in the office during nine to five and they call their customer, the customer isn't gonna be tied up with something else and is, is going to be open to answering that call? We do direct mail, right, between you know, dollar, two dollars, three dollars per direct mail, but we all know, because we're consumers too, that when we get those pieces of mail, in fact, the glossier they are, the faster they go in to that recycling bin. Right? We pay extra for the gloss and then it goes away. And so how do we help bring our advisors along? They want to be brought along. You know, we know this because advisors, they try in their own ways, sometimes against our, our wish, they're trying to get with their times. Clients text them all the time. And advisors and agents who want to be client-centric and do right by their customer, they, they really feel caught in a, in a tough place, right? Do they, do they respond? Do they not respond? And over half of advisors admit, yes, they text for business. They do it because that's what the customer wants. But they need our help. They need our help both on the regulatory side, they need our help overall in operationalizing mobile and all of these technologies into how they run their business, right? Whether it's the SEA and FINRA rules from a records retention perspective or the opt-in that's required, TCPA um, in the US, CASEL in Canada, um, the GDPR across the EU, all of these things. Right? Advisors don't want to navigate that. They, don't, they can't navigate that without our help. Well, Advisor Cloud, which is the topic of this week together, we believe can help address this gap. Advisors want to market and connect and service and delight their customer like it's 2017. Advisor Cloud gives us a way. It gives us a path to getting there. In addition and in parallel to all of the great technologies that many of, of our firms have invested in, on the left side, on the corporate marketing cloud, whether it's your brand social efforts or it's your digital direct website or it's your marketing automation or it's your mobile app or brand advertising. In fact, the more that we do over there, the more that we have to enable advisors, right? Because the more, the better our robo-advisor is, the higher the client expectation that when something happens, the advisor will be there and will reach out and will be proactive. And so we need to, for each of these areas, almost each of these areas, create a parallel, simple version that makes sense for the advisor. Right? To complement the corporate website, we need the local website. To complement the corporate mobile app and, and notifications, we need advisors to be able to text and provide notifications of their own. To complement um, brand social, we need advisors out there and agents out there amplifying and using their unique, authentic local voice. A voice that, as a corporation, we could never use. It's very powerful and it's, it's frankly an asset of each of your organizations, is that you are a people business, and those people have relationships, they have voice, they have personality, and that's what consumers today crave. And so what is the advisor cloud? Um, again, paying further homage to Steve Jobs, he loved during his keynotes to talk about the three most compelling um, things about whatever he was launching. So the advisor cloud, what is it? It's a set of digital tools that advisors use, advisors and agents use, to connect with their customers and prospects. It's, it's um, document storage. You're gonna hear from Aaron Levy, the founder and CEO of Box later. He's, he's really entertaining. It's um, web conference or video chat, whether it's GoToMeeting or WebEx. It's social selling, it's advisor websites, it's texting, it's all of these tools and technologies that every agent and advisor needs to connect with their customer. And in terms of what it does, it's, it's gotta be convenient for customers, right? What does success look like? First and foremost, it looks like customer convenience. Number two is it's got to be easy for those agents, because if it isn't easy, they're not gonna use it. Most agents, we know, they're not tech savvy. And even the ones who are, they don't have a lot of extra time to do a lot of other things, so it's gotta be easy. And then finally, we can't just optimize for the here and now, we have to think longer term, and we see, in the industry, 
Longer term, the way that businesses gain advantage and they win is to be data driven. And so the advisor cloud, in addition to being convenient for customers, easy for agents, it's got to be data driven for all parties involved. So let's talk about each of those. So number one, convenience. We have to help, we have to work with, not against our customers. Sounds easy to do, difficult to implement. This is an actual email that I received from one of your firms last week. I'm not going to name any names. And I'm pretty sure it wasn't written or, or looked at by anybody on the marketing team. But there's a few things about this email. First of all, you can't read a lot of it. And the reason is because it's not mobile optimized. So this email, it's, it's a pinch and zoom email that you have to kind of move your finger around to be able to read the email. The second thing, as you'll notice, is it doesn't actually say what the message is. So I have no idea if this is something urgent that I need to look into right away or just a routine kind of form email that gets sent to me. Um, and so, and then the third thing is related to that is it asks me to log in to their secure portal, to your secure portal, um, and then to download a PDF. So that's like, that's a, that's a really big commitment. So what I did, I didn't even look at the message. I actually, I hope there's nothing wrong with my account with you, but I just don't, I can't, I don't have time to go do this. And so this is what I mean when we have to work with, not against our customers. And we've all experienced this, right? And of course, there's lots of good reasons. It's, it's got to be secure, right? It's banking, there's all these things, but surely there's a way, there's a better way. We can do better than this together. Customers, we know, all of us in our, in our personal lives, we expect everything to be instant and mobile, the opposite of what I just showed you. Uh, we, we know across the board, average response time for texting, 90 seconds. 98% of texts are opened. Think about that. Imagine if 98% of the calls we made to our customers were answered, or if 98% of the direct mail or the emails that we sent were open. That would be insane, right? It, we would be crazy not to, not to take advantage of this. And here it is, right? For, at least for now, it's still a very, um, trusted and, and appreciated channel. And from an email perspective, the emails that are open, 70% of the time, it's on mobile. Not surprisingly, right? That's, that's what we all do, that's what our customers do as well. And so we have to deliver, we have to help agents deliver through the agent cloud, through the advisor cloud. We have to make sure that social is mobile. We have to make sure that sites are mobile. We have to make sure that emails are mobile. We have to make sure that texting, well, texting is, is inherently mobile, right? Well, what does it mean for social to be mobile? We, we know one of the greatest sources of growth from um, a time on site and engagement perspective on Facebook, it's Facebook Messenger. Facebook Messenger, Facebook also owns WhatsApp, which is also a mobile messaging application. And so how do we start to think about that and how agents can leverage Facebook Messenger? And so we know, we know these touches matter. That's why the agents keep making the calls. That's why we keep selling, sending the direct mail. Um, that's why we keep doing these things. We know these touches matter and that the most loyal customers we have are those who actually hear from us. I mean, imagine that, right, is they have those touches specifically on non-financial and insurance matters, right, because that's, that's what builds relationship because we're not always just talking about our products, not always just talking about financial services. Now, the interesting thing, of course, is that by age, the specific channel preference varies, right? Um, not surprisingly, some groups prefer email versus others prefer the website or the blog or social media. in person still incredibly important across all age groups, but the important thing to note here is that these aren't mutually exclusive and that using email and using text, using social to build awareness and drive people to the event and then to follow up right away, so just like you're gonna get a follow up from me right away after this summit, that is hugely additive, right? That's creating a multi-touch, multi multi-channel experience that's like, wow, I, I was there in person and then they texted me right afterwards to thank me for coming. That's what we need to help our agents do. So that's first and foremost, convenience for customers. Secondly, we have to make these technologies easy for agents. We know that on top of everything else they have to do, if we make it hard, they're not gonna do it. And so what are, the, what are the agents and advisors telling us when we interview them, when we survey them, when we ask you um, what you're hearing from your field organizations? Well, they say a few things over and over again. First, they say, please don't make me sign up for yet another program. Don't let, make me do another you know, marketing flavor of the month. Don't make me log in to 10 different systems. I just don't have time. My team doesn't have time. We're being pulled into many different directions and we have to hit and exceed our numbers at the same time. 
Number two is don't make me do everything manually. And number three is don't make me do it alone. Please help me leverage the team that I had, the junior reps, the new assistant that I hired. Help me leverage the marketing team, whether it's the local regional marketing team or it's the home office marketing team. Let me use the resources that are there to, to go digital, to go mobile, to go social. And so we have had many conversations, and I think this was, uh, this was the topic that we, we shared with you yesterday, was how do we really design social for how advisors work? If we look at how agents and advisors spend their time, you know, over half of it is on client and prospect contact. That contact primarily, it's one-to-one, -one and traditionally has been phone um, and face-to-face. And -face. How do we really make client contact efficient and convenient for both the client and advisor without adding to the administrative tasks and the compliance burden, right? We have to balance that out. How do we, how do we minimally add to administrative tasks and have maximum effect on uh, prospecting and client contact. That's the goal. Well, if we look at the, the customer funnel today, if you think about a lot of social programs and website programs, um, it's, it's really top of funnel. A lot of the activities that we, we ask our agents to do is to post on their Facebook page or to tweet. It's, it's top of funnel, they're building awareness. It's one to many. It's, it's, you're, they're sharing it and anyone who follows them or everyone who follows them gets to see that. Um, but the big unlock, just looking at how customers buy and how advisors spend their time, the big unlock is to go from one to many only to being able to leverage social, mobile, and digital for the full client funnel. And that includes going from one to many only to also being able to enable one to one. Now texting and email as channels inherently are one-to-one. -one. But there are also ways, as we've brainstormed with you, that we can help make social and websites one-to-one -one also. How do we do that? Well, for social, we already talked about Facebook Messenger. Um, social signals, we've had some developments there that I'll, I'll share with you in a moment. That is one-to-one, -one, right? It's very much person-to-person. -person. It's specific about Aaron, specific about Connor, it's specific about Emily. And from a website perspective, you know, one, one, one idea we've been batting around, would love your feedback on, is what if there's click to chat on the website? You know, the, the prospect or customer goes to the website and they want to talk to someone right away and they can click a box and they can essentially start messaging that person and goes directly to hearsay messages. All of a sudden, the website becomes a personal portal and the lines blur between these channels because we know customers don't think in terms of channels, they think in terms of what they're trying to get done. And so we have to be able to enable the one-to-one -one for any of these channels. And so that's really what we've been doing in, in partnership with you is we, our mission together, all of us in this room, is we have to enable agents and advisors and mortgage bankers and wholesalers to market and sell and connect like it's 2017. It's been 10 years. Our customers have changed. Our agents have to change too. We have to give them one place to go. We have to make it really easy and integrated for them. It's got to be 100% mobile optimized. Texting can't be the only mobile program you have. The website has to be mobile. Social has to be mobile. Emails have to be mobile. It has to be built for collaboration. It has to be easy for agents to have their assistant reply on their behalf or post on their behalf. And compliance has to be included. It has to be, the, the box has to be checked and it can't be a series of hurdles that agents and their teams have to jump through to make it happen. So let's talk about each of these. Hearsay Social is our flagship product. Um, I, you know, this is what we started the company with eight years ago, back when I was helping write the code for this. And it's still, we continue to pour a ton of resources in continuing to build and innovate in a best-in-class agent advisor social application. Um, what's new? In the last few months, we've launched Facebook video. That's, of course, the most engaging format on social media. People love watching video. We've launched Facebook ads, the ability for corporate to local ads. So many agents can't, they don't know how to set up their own um, online ads. It's kind of a pretty specialized skill set. So we let you do it for them. You set, we can set up the parameters, either you pay or they pay, or it's co-op dollars. And we're finding 
much lower um, cost per click, CPMs, and higher conversion. Why? Because people, people know the agent already. Maybe it's an existing customer and you're cross-selling them or you're upselling them on another product. Automated campaigns I'll talk about in just a second, so bookmark that. Social signals, been through a lot of iterations, but in the last six months we've now rolled out Twitter signals and the, the quality is actually pretty high there. And so anywhere we can get, right, is we're trying to understand more about the customer so we can get one-to-one, -one, we can get intimate, we can be that much more relevant and personal and personalized. Um, and then coming out later this year, as I alluded to earlier, mobile messaging. Right? That's how social becomes one-to-one. -one. That's how social goes from being one-to-many top of funnel to getting really, really into the personal exchange before, during, and post-sale. Content campaigns, um, a lot of your agents told us, you know, I don't have time to post. Um, I, don't, I don't have an assistant. I'm starting out in the business. Can you just do it for me? You know so much about me. You know that, you know, I love, um, you know that I love cycling, and that's how I bond with a lot of my customers as we go on rides together. You know that um, I, I live in North Carolina. Um, you know that I grew up in Cleveland, and I'm a huge Cavaliers fan. So you know that about me. Help me set it and forget it. Let me opt into an, an automated social drip campaign so that any time there's news about the Cavaliers or any time there's a Tour de France or cycling news, just, just post it out for me. Make me look smart. Make me sound good on topics that are authentically me. All right, so this is, this is going to be huge for helping automate and delegate that top of funnel so that agents, especially those who don't have assistance, can focus on what they do best, which is that one-to-one -one interaction with contacts that they have. Hearsay messages, you know, you heard from the stats from Steve earlier, um, it's, it's huge, it's, it's, it's the fastest growing and one of the, the mar largest and most effective channels for one-to-one -one communication, but we have to provide compliance coverage. And it can't be onerous. It's got to be smooth and not spook any of the customers when we ask for their attestation. So whether it's FINRA or TCPA or Castle, it's got to have that built-in attestation flow so that compliance, um, there's no issue there. We've got to be smart. Right? So often what we're finding as we analyze these texts that get sent back and forth, it's about scheduling and reminders. You know, hey, Amanda, I'm going to be late. Or, hey, Jeremy, I'll see you tomorrow. Are we still on for coffee? And that's, that's what we do with our friends and family. That's what agents want to do with their customers and customers want to do with their agents. How do we make that easy? How do we make that integrated with their calendars? That's, that's really what you've pushed us to do. Um, other ideas from you, MMS support for photos. Um, one of you told us that um, DocuSign was too onerous and that a lot of your customers were forgetting to sign their applications. Um, at, the, at the last step, and so you asked us for MMS so that they could take a picture of their signature and send it in, a couple of other use cases there, and so our team delivered. Um, you also asked us and said, hey, not all of my agents are, feel comfortable texting, or a lot of them are, are out in the field, they're constantly meeting with one customer after another after another, can we have their team help them out? You know, especially for co confirming meetings or responding to account service requests. Hey, could you send me my statement? Or hey, could you, could you remind me what we did about this or what we talked about last time? And so we built it. We built the web team texting console so that assistants and staff in the agent's office can text on their behalf, right? Of course, agents and advisors have to authorize. They can say, you know, I trust Dave and I trust Steve to text as me. And, and that frees up that advisor's time to, for those high value conversations face to face and then someone back home is just setting these up all day long, wishing happy birthday, sending billing reminders, account reminders, all of the things that are so onerous to do today by phone or by mail. Hearsay sites. Um, you know, you guys asked us for a simple site solution that agents would be proud of, that would render on mobile and that would be easy for them to update. Instead of having to learn a whole new system, what if they could just go to the same place they already log into every day for Hearsay Social, and in that same place be able to post and update new content to their website, right? New taxes or tax reminder goes on the website, and also update their profile, you know, change of address, change of office location, new team member, one place to go, updates everywhere on social and websites. How do we make sure that search engine optimization, the fact that they show up 
number one or number two or number three versus below the fold or the next page of Google results, which nobody ever goes to, how do we take care of them, that for them? Since we know most agents and advisors don't even know what SEO is. And those of, us, those of them who do, they don't have time. They don't have time to optimize on their own. They need our help. Um, a big part of that is mass localization. How do we use smart rules based on where we know the agents based to, to say, you know, if, if all of my agents, we can inject variables. So um, insert agent city here, insert agents products that they're licensed to sell here. And all of a sudden, we've programmatically created 10,000 websites that are actually highly unique, highly customized for that agent's business, which is great for the customer, also great for those search rankings. And then last but not least, you guys asked us for an advisor locator, an agent locator, an easy way to match up either based on location, which is the V1.0, or how do we get more advanced? How do we help surface someone who is a second degree connection, or someone who is also a cycling fan, or someone who specializes in working with other executives, or specializes in working with other small business owners? That's, that's where we're going with all of this for, for hearsay sites. And then last but not least, Hearsay 360, how do we tie it all together with personal and personalized content for every client? Integrated content library, the same content library that we've spent so much time building out for social and for sites, now we can get one-to-one -one with it. And we, we've built out all this great content on retirement savings or what to do when you become a new parent, right? There, we have all kinds of questions there. How do you take that content and when you know that you know, Kathy's just had a child, how do you send that to her one-to-one, -one, whether it's email or text, right? Because you know she might, not have, she might have missed it on your Twitter feed, but you want that, her to get that personal touch from you because you've had that personal conversation. Smart action list, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment, but how do we take all of the, the data that we know about both the agent as well as the customer and use that to help suggest to agents what they should do? Um, drip campaigns, so similar idea. So the drip campaigns we saw on social, that's one to many. That's posting to your Twitter profile, it's posting to your Facebook, it's posting to your LinkedIn. Drip campaigns in an email context, that's one to one. It's like I know Steve is interested in, um, in baseball, he's a Yankees fan, I'm gonna drip Yankees content to him every time something interesting comes up. And finally, this is, this is new for us and why we're having the ecosystem panel this afternoon. It's gotta be coordinated with corporate because there are times when Steve wants an email from, he, he'll expect an email from New York Life and there are times when he expects his email from, from Aaron, his agent. Right? Those, those two have to work in concert and we shouldn't inundate corporate email and local email to him on, at the same day, right? Because that's too much. We have to sequence it out. And so overall, kind of the umbrella of what we're doing is we're trying to bring these channels together so that agents don't have to think about, oh, I'm gonna I have to remember um, that, that John likes to be texted, but that Steve wants to be a Facebook message, and Aaron wants to get an email, and, War and, and Walden wants to get direct mail. I mean, that's too complicated. How do we just take care of that for the agent and learn over time what Kevin's preference is versus Mel's preference? Right? We'll just take care of it. And from a, from a UX perspective, how do we go from today's world where the user experience that the advisors see when they log in, this, this is the, the new one, not the, not the current one. The current one, it's pretty optimized for the, uh, the program managers, for those of us who are managing the digital and social media programs, right? The, if you think of, if you can, in your minds, I think of the tags on the left, it's, you know, it's the content type. Is it a message, a link? Um, is it pre-scheduled, it's released? I mean, that's really helpful if your job is thinking about content, which many of our jobs are. But if you're an agent, that's confusing. That's not immediately apparent to you why, what to do and why that's business critical. And so where we're evolving all of our solutions is to a world where it's, it's goals-based, if you will. What is the advisor trying to accomplish? Are they trying to market, sell, or service? If they're marketing, are they trying to build their online brand? Boom shows them all of their one-to-many content to build their brand and profile. Are they trying to promote an event, like in this case? Well, sure, here's all the content that the advisor can use to promote an event. This is what marketing has provided with them. They have a template for running a retirement workshop. They have a template for running a college savings workshop 
um, with free babysitting for new mom. I mean, I'll sign me up for that. Um, there's an event, event location update. There's a reminder set of emails and social media posts. There's a thank you for coming. It's all there for them to execute to augment that in-person event that they want to hold. Um, community and charity, market updates. What about selling? From a selling perspective, there can be product um, content. There's um, following, up from, um, following up from a meeting. Great to see you. Here's the, the link to the client onboarding that we talked about. Here's the link to the, the whole life policy that you wanted to learn more about and the details. Um, confirming a meeting, quarterly touch base. From a servicing perspective, post acquisition, um, how do we help systematize the annual review? Right? How do we just have that on a schedule once a year? We'll email them, we'll set it up, and we'll make it happen. How do we um, build in rules, like if there's a change in portfolio or change in market, and that customer has significant holdings in England and Brexit's about to happen, how do we make sure that we stay on top of that and be proactive? Because again, those expectations are sky high from robo advice. So getting advisor centric, getting deep into how advisors work, what their workflow is, what their business process is, going back to that pie chart of how they spend their time to get today, making that much more efficient. I mean, our goal is for agents who come into our solution once this rolls out, for it to be immediately obvious what they're supposed to do. It's like kind of like when you go to Evite. How many of you have used Evite? Almost everybody, right? You don't need to get trained on Evite. I mean, you know. So you go there with a goal. You're either planning a birthday party or a summer barbecue or your kid's birthday. I mean, you, you know what you want to do, and so it helps you quickly, easily get that done. That's where we're, we're bringing social and digital, and that's how we drive engagement and value across the entire customer funnel. Okay, so last but not least, everything we do, it's, there's so much data that's being collected in the background, and that is an asset for us medium and long term. You know, the first two pieces, that helps us address the needs of today, but what we learn over time helps us build differentiation and personalization over the long term. And you know, AI and data isn't just for advisors, it's really for everyone, but let's, let's start with, with the advisors. How do we, and we, we just rolled this out, so we have the hearsay action list where we know what the best practice is. We know after you meet with someone, you should follow up with them within 12 hours, ideally sooner than that. We know that when someone has changed job, that's the only time they care to talk about a 401k rollover. Given that we know these business rules, instead of just giving it to our agents in a big binder, in a training manual, why don't we build it in, automate it, systematize the practice management so that we remind them, we tell them, we say, hey, this happened, this is what you should do. Here's a notification, wish Molly a happy birthday. In fact, here's the text to wish her a happy birthday, click to send. We've already preceded it for you, we've done it for you. Um, Allison, fill out a form on your website, here's the text that goes into the email thanking her, click to send or personalize it if you want. If you personalize it, we'll remember that for next time. Um, so how do we really start to get smart and again, help advisors be much more productive doing business critical tasks that they need to do every single day um, as part of, of running their, their practices. CRM integration, um, we just launched on the Salesforce App Exchange. We are going to do the same thing with the other uh, major CRM providers out there. That is a great data source to help, again, drive these actions, drive this data about customers to make those actions very tailored and targeted. But it's not just for agents and advisors. We have invested a ton of, of focus in smart AI for compliance. Right? Compl the compliance burden just keeps growing. I learned a stat yesterday that was, was staggering. You know, 30 to 40 percent of the costs in, in many financial firms goes to compliance regulatory overhead. How do we help, help that? How do we help apply smart algorithms and AI to do that? Well, that's what we've done with an intelligent alerts. It's, helping reduce the number of false positives. It's scanning through everything that's been ever posted in, a, in, the, in your system and gone through human review and using that to learn, oh, well, this is what good looks like, or this, or the, whereas this other category is actually not that risky. Every time it's been flagged in the past, the human supervisor has said that it's okay. If we see it again in the future, we're just gonna automatically allow that. So how to, and that just keeps getting better over time with more data, more users, it gets more and more and more accurate, even more accurate and more consistent than human supervisors. 
compliance risk meter. How do we automatically sort the, the, the alerts for supervisors so that they can look at the red alerts first, the highest risk items first, and they can prioritize and, again, be smart about how they spend their day. Auto remediation. We know in some cases we want a review, either AI or, super, uh, or um, our human supervisor, but there are some things that we just know we want to automatically delete. It's never okay. It doesn't need to be reviewed. Auto remediation takes care of that. We remove it um, within, you know, as fast as within seconds and minutes, depending on, on the network and the API speeds, so that we address that risk right away. Um, and then the last piece, it's not AI, but it's important from a, a workflow and an efficiency perspective. We, we know that field supervisors, their preferred, um, one of their preferred devices is tablets, right? They're, it's less about doing it on their phone. It's really, they've told us it's more about doing it on their tablet and doing it on their desktop. So we've optimized for that. So we have to know our user. We have to treat them differently than we treat the marketing um, home office. We have to treat them differently than we treat um, agents and advisors. And then above all, smart AI and data helps us deliver to the client. So the advisor is benefiting, compliance and supervision is benefiting, but above all, the client is benefiting. Because ultimately, the client wants advice and, and recommendations and help who, that's just for them. Many of you may remember Molly the Millennial from last year. She's actually standing in the back there taking, she'll, she'll be providing autographs later. But Molly, she, this is true, she just got engaged. Congratulations to Molly. And so there are these things that we know about Molly from her Facebook page, from the fact that she got engaged, and we know that she loves to text, right? I, I email her all the time, she never writes back to me, I text her, she responds instantly, right? So she doesn't have to tell me that she prefers text, I know that, I can infer that through my data. And in all of these ways, Molly wants to be educated, she, she wants to understand about philanthropy, she wants to be smart about how she thinks about taxes, she wants to be alerted both when there's a change in the market, but she also wants to be notified when we have events on, you know, how to think about how much to spend for your wedding. Um, she wants to personally connect around her hobbies, around um, the Yankees, or around yoga, or whatever her hobbies and interests are. And I want to be able to, as her agent, congratulate her on her, her engagement and to wish her a happy birthday, to text her happy birthday when I know it's her birthday. And so all of these things, all of these data sources help agents ultimately build that relationship with, with Molly in a very efficient and personalized way. So that's the advisor cloud. It's, it's really ultimately, it's, it's convenient so that we can, we can build that personal relationship and have loyal clients who give us referrals and do lots of business with us. It's about driving adoption because if we can't get agents and, and advisors to use this stuff, we shouldn't do it. It just doesn't matter. Right? We invest all of these resources into setting up these programs, but, but if it's so complicated that most of the agents aren't using it, then it, isn't, it just isn't worth doing. And then finally, we have to take the long view of these programs. We can't just address the short-term compliance need or the short-term need to have a website that renders on your mobile device. We have to take the long view the way that companies like Amazon have done, and we have to start collecting that data today because that data helps us build over time, and the value of that data accrues exponentially. I'm gonna give you a very poignant, uh, or, uh, specific example before I wrap. We've been analyzing with you the texts and the exchanges that could happen, the exchanges that happen via text messaging through hearsay messages, and the fascinating discovery that we've had with one of your companies is that there are actually a, a pretty finite number of, of different um, of different exchanges that agents have with their customer. Right? There's, there's, it's not infinite. It's, call it 20, it's 25. And agents and advisors tend to have those same 25 storylines or exchanges with, with, with their customers and prospects over and over and over and over and over again with different customers and prospects. Right? Because anyone, I mean, Molly, you're unique, but the other, you know, anyone else in my portfolio who is recently engaged, I'm probably going to have a pretty similar conversation with them. And so as we think about, you know, not total automation with chatbots, because again, we think, we believe that that human touch is so important, but how do we start to automate more of the routine and make it easy for the agent 
to do the routine and the mundane so that they, we can free up their time to have those high value emotional personal touch conversations. That's where the advisor cloud is going. That's where we as an industry have to go. Um, 10 years is a long time. Um, 2007, I mean, doesn't that first iPhone look so small? We thought there was an issue with it, with the graphic, but in fact, it was that was the first iPhone. We've come a long way um, in 10 years. You think about the audience we serve. Um, some of you may recognize who this is. Justin Bieber and millions of people just like him 10 years ago were 13 years old. These people now work at our companies. These people we are now trying to do business with. These people are going to inherit a lot of money. And these people don't know, they don't remember a world where life wasn't on demand, where it wasn't location aware, where there wasn't an ability to FaceTime with your service provider and with your, your friend and with your, your girlfriend or boyfriend, right? They just don't understand that world and we have to adapt to them. And so thank you for joining us um, this week. We're going to market like it's 2017. We are going to sell like it's 2017. We are going to comply like it's 2017 um, because we, we sure can and make it better. It's an honor to work with all of you. Thanks.